the uh, 33rd meeting of the 21st Council will come to order. Everyone is here tonight. Councilor Lewis uh, has been excused. Councilor Winter will be uh, late coming to the meeting, but he will be here tonight. Councilor Ben. Thanks, President. Um, and uh, also, just for the record, uh, Councilor Sanchez is also a sponsor of this um, legislation. We didn't get his name on it in time for it to get into the bill book that way. But uh, I move that the rules be suspended for the purpose of placing R-169 on tonight's agenda for final action. R-169 is reporting the City of Albuquerque and immediately sees construction in the Rio Grande Bosque between Central Avenue and uh, I-40 and amending the capital implementation program in the City of Albuquerque uh, by approving new projects and changing the scope of existing projects. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Thank you, Councilors. Ben and then Sanchez. This requires a vote. Two thirds of the council are present. Those in favor say yes. 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 Opposed, no. That passes. <laughs> we are now under general public comments. We have the number of people that uh, are allowed to speak tonight. Uh, we're also very fortunate to have a colleague, Commissioner Debbie O'Malley, to speak to us. Commissioner O'Malley. Uh -huh. <coughs> <coughs> Thank you, Mr. President, members of the City Council. Uh, I'm also here to support the bill uh, to stop, uh, uh, I would say, bulldozing the bulk the scale. That, that, uh, the whole idea of uh, working with the, the Sierra Club, my understanding is the mayor was working, or his people were working with the Sierra Club uh, and other folks to come up with a plan, a consensus plan, on how to move forward with some of, some of the changes to the bulk scale. And, uh, and this is my understanding of what happened, is that all of a sudden uh, the mayor and ordered, I guess, the, the departments or whatever to go in there and start tearing up uh, and, and building this trail. This was a plan that was not agreed to, and that is incredibly disrespectful. The Bosque belongs to all of us, and it's a living river. I think that's important to understand. This is a living river. It's, it's, a, it's, it's got its own ecosystem, and I think people appreciate it now. This isn't San Antonio. This isn't a ditch that was made into some sort of feature. This is a living river, and we have to be understanding of how people feel about it, uh, that it has enormous value to us, that along with the safety system, let's not mess it up. And I support uh, your bill that you're sponsoring, uh, Councilor Beth and Councilor Sanchez, to stop uh, destroying uh, the bull scheme. Thank you very much for your Commissioner O'Malley, Commissioner O'Malley, before you leave, I think um, for sure Councilor Ben will like to say that. Just quickly, uh, Commissioner O'Malley, uh, thanks for coming down to speak and, and, um, uh, and I appreciate the support with regard to the bus gate. Hello, my name is Michael Jensen. I'm the Middle Rio Grande Urban Waters Ambassador for the Urban Waters Federal Partnership. I also sit on the Open Space Advisory Board. I want to make it clear I'm speaking for myself tonight, not for those agencies. Um, however, I do know that Open Space and the Advisory Board are repeatedly frustrated by the fact that agencies that do work in the Bosque don't uh, consult fully and completely with them on the scope and scale of their work. So it's kind of disconcerting that the mayor uh, initiated a project that did not consult with uh, Middle Rio Grande Conservancy District over a special use permit. I myself personally gotten two of those to collect water samples uh, on Conservancy property with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, with the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, or with the New Mexico Environment Department of Service Water Quality Bureau over things relevant to their purview. And most importantly, because this area uh, of the project is larger than one acre of disturbed uh, land, they failed to consult with the EPA DP6 office in Dallas for a uh, national pollutant discharge elimination uh, system 
permit. They didn't do a notice of intent uh, under the construction general permit. Um, so uh, they're technically in violation there. Um, as I said, this failure to consult is setting a bad precedent for the open space and the city to go back to some of these same agencies and fault them for not consulting adequately. And I sort of reminded of Councilor Sanchez's effort uh, last year to reaffirm the Bosque Action Plan, which called for better consultation among all the agencies doing work, uh, something that was vetoed by the mayor. Um, and lastly, uh, talking to the contractor and, and other people in the city, I understand there's a bridge being priced out, or maybe it already has, to go over the site, thing, and I hope there's a consultation about that. Thank you very much. Thank you. Followed by Richard Harris, followed by Gail Barber. Mr. President, I'm Camilla Feibelman, a director of the Rio Grande chapter of the Sierra Club, which represents 4,000 members in the Albuquerque area. I think it's good to just remember what the Bosque is all about. Albuquerque is one of the only cities that's protected the forested area along its river in the entire country. We have the largest cottonwood forest in the entire country. So this is a really special place, and our Bosque Action Team is dedicated to increasing access to it, whether it's on the east side or on the west side, but decreasing the harm so that we can all enjoy seeing bird life, wildlife, and enjoying a really unique river. Off to a pretty rough start with the city on the Rio Grande vision. They put the project out to Decker Parish and Sabatini and came back with a real manicured plan. This was going to be kind of an urban park rather than the natural place that it is. The city put on public hearings in September of 2013. 400 people showed up and there was a resounding no, this isn't what we want. Now to the city's credit, they slowed down and they really started listening. Um, the, the plan between Central and I-40 was something that we met multiple times with them on. We went on walks with the city. And last Monday the 9th, we received from city employees three maps with three options, asking for our feedback for the public process. On Tuesday, we went down there to check out the area, look at the map look at the area, and they had started work with heavy machinery. Now my job is to get the public to engage in the public process and trust the city, say, yeah, we're willing to work with these guys. So those of you who are here in support of the Bosque and engaged in that process, please stand up. These are the folks that I convinced to engage with the city. On Tuesday, that trust was bulldozed. Thank you. However, I don't know. Uh, thank you for, for speaking. So uh, I, I have the impression, and correct me if I'm wrong, that there had been a lot of progress towards these three final plans, I, I suppose, that, and um, also was under the impression that, that there was going to be a limited number of more meetings and, and a decision made on that. I think we were on two weeks from a consensus decision with the city. I mean, I really applaud the city. We were getting there. Um, we were looking at maps together. They were asking for our feedback. We gave on the concept of a wider trail in certain areas. Um, but we asked, especially that the area at the waterfront be protected because that's sort of the most sensitive area. It's area for nesting. Um, but that area got plowed through to the tune of eight feet. The ultimate trail will probably be six feet, but the bed uh, is eight feet. Um, now, I have contacted the mayor's office and Ms. Barbara Taylor not less than five times and haven't heard a word back. So, you know, we were getting emails about maps on Monday and no response on Tuesday. We Thank would like to continue working with the city. We're happy to start Thank over. Thank you very much. This is Mayor, followed by Diana followed by Diana May. Uh, Mr. President, Councilors, thank you for the opportunity to speak tonight. 
Um, just to follow up on Councillor Benton's question, I am 100% sure that if we had been able to continue that process, that we would have come to a, a consensus plan that everybody could have agreed to for the trail that is in the Bosque. It would have been a multi-use trail. We would not have had as heavy a footprint in the Bosque as the trail that's being constructed now. But we would have come to a consensus option that could have been uh, considered and could have been built. Unfortunately, because the mayor went in there and, or I'm not exactly the prices were going to be but because that trail was brought through the Bosque, that, that, that ability to come to a consensus was cut off. The disagreement in this case, I think, really is about you know, what our vision for the Rio Grande Valley State Park and the Bosque is. Is the Bosque going to be a city park with developed features where when you go there it feels more like you're in a city park or is it going to be a natural space where you can go to enjoy the beauty of the river and the cottonwoods and the birds and where you feel more like you're in a natural space. That, that's what I think the real question is here. The trail that is being constructed now is going to be an obvious developed feature in the mosque. It will be a uniform width it will be a, a, a smooth uh, uh, surface, a perfectly level surface, kind of a groomed surface, covered in crusher vines that are different than the surrounding soil, and it will be an obvious developed feature. It will be out of character with what the Bosque really is. The thing that makes the Bosque a special and unique place for uh, that so many people love is that it is a place right within the city where you can go and enjoy nature. Projects in the Bosque should preserve this natural character. The trail that's being built now does not do that. Thank you, Mr. Barrett. Thank you, Mr. President and Councilors. My name is Gail Garber, and I am the director of Hawks Aloft here in Albuquerque. We've been a nonprofit for 21 years. We've monitored birds in the Bosque since 2004, from Rio Rancho to La Jolla State Game Refuge. And I want to say, talk about a tale of three cities. So our data show us that Rio Rancho, with a wide pressure fine trail on Riverside, um, similar to that being installed now in the city of Albuquerque, supports the lowest density of all habitats in the riparian zone of all seven miles. It's even less than pure stands of salt cedar. The Corrales Bosque, on the other hand, has the highest density of birds and a variety of species of all habitats within the entire reach, particularly in areas along the river bank where the bank has been lowered and they've planted willow swales. Just last spring, one year after they did their riparian restoration, we found 15 willow flock catchers and endangered species on the first survey of the year. This is an astounding number, not even found in pristine habitat in the core of the range. Corrales has been recognized as an important bird area by Audubon Society. It was the bosque of Corrales was featured in um, New Mexico magazine. We've collaborated with the city of Albuquerque throughout the process and um, attended the walks. One of our recent suggestions to open space was to create similar patches with lower banks and willow swales immediately adjacent to the river where the trail is now being expanded. We even included funding suggestions to help establish a premier wetland and riparian woodland in the midst of the city. The river's edge is the most... Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Diana Mays, followed by Jennifer Bunce, followed by Don Schrader. Welcome. Mr. President, Council Members, my name is Diana Mays and I'm a member with Olay. Um, I'm here today to urge you guys to vote yes for R-169 um, in the hopes that my daughter would be able to walk through the Bosque in its natural habitat the way I was when I was growing up. I want her to be able to pave through the Bosque on the dirt paths that, are, that thousands of people before us paved, not on a crusher fine that's essentially damaging our ecosystem. <coughs> Thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you very much. Followed by Don Schrader, followed by Father Frank Mr. President, Councilors, 
Um, I come before you tonight, um, and I want to first thank um, Council Sanchez and Ben for introducing this legislation. And I want to also urge the rest of you to do the right thing later when you vote. Um, we, we, need, we need to stand up for a lot of things in this city. And I think that the legislation concerning the Bosque is one of many. We need to be better than we are. And we need to show, we need leadership shown from city council because to a lot of us, it's not coming from city hall at this time. Um, I'm here also to say that on behalf of cyclists, with regard to Bosque um, plans and improvements, that um, pressure fines may or may not be good for any field of vehicles. Um, they can turn out to be a relatively good surface to ride on or to have a wheelchair or a stroller, but too often they don't. And so without really understanding what this town is about, what's going on, we're not, we're not supporting it because all too often it, it makes riding impossible. Um, and it wouldn't be conducive to a wheelchair. They run about the same kind of a tire and wheel that a bicycle, a road bicycle does. And so I want you to consider that as well, that it may be a bit disingenuous to say that these improvements are for these populations. Um, to my knowledge, the Greater Albuquerque Bicycle Committee hasn't been consulted um, about this plan either. So there's been no bicycle input, to my knowledge, about um, going forward with this pressure fire situation. And last, you know, I'm an Albuquerque native. The Bosque has been a really unique and beautiful part of my, my time in the city. And we, we need to protect it. We need to protect it in its natural state and not make it into a theme park. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mr. President, counselors, uh, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, I want to focus on the uh, extremely flawed process leading up to uh, these outrageous actions instigated by the mayor. Um, the Bosque Action Team, as was earlier stated, um, mailed out, was mailed out different options on uh, this project and, and how to proceed. But almost immediately, the uh, Leascapes Company uh, began the destruction work on the Bosque Trail. It was almost like a deliberate insult. Um, the work actually began on last Monday, on April, February the 9th, but even the city's open space staff didn't learn about it until the next day. Uh, Ms. Barbara Taylor, uh, the uh, new director, brand new director of Parks and Recreation, recklessly neglected to even advise the MRGCD, the uh, Rio Grande Conservancy District, or the EPA, that she was planning this work, even though she was uh, obligated to do so. Uh, she told me that um, there has already been enough public input and that she will move forward with this hasty, ill-conceived, and uncalled-for project. Um, because of this uh, badly breached trust, which I think she, uh, as I said before, at the instigation of the mayor has uh, caused, I call on Ms. Barbara Taylor to resign as a Director of Parks and Recreation for the City of Albuquerque. And if she refuses to do so, I implore the City Council to facilitate her resignation or removal as director. Albuquerque and the Bosque deserve better. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Mr. Chair. President. Thank you, Councilors. Uh, I come to speak in support of the Bosque and um, to thank Isaac Benton for putting this issue in front of the Council tonight. Uh, first of all, what's being built there, it's a road. <laughs> it's an ugly gravel road and the work that's been done in the past few days has done more destruction to the Bosque than all of the traffic probably for millennia over what are these so-called road paths and I think that term is being used by the mayor to make it sound like you know terrible things are, are going on and that paths are being developed willy-nilly through the, through the basket. I see all manner of people, bicycles, strollers, on the current path, there is no lack of access for anybody. And the Bosque is beautiful as is, and this road that is being built is, 
is just ugly. It feels bad under the feet. The cyclists are saying that they don't think it's going to be any good for them, and therefore not any good for, for people in wheelchairs. And it occurs to me, considering the other issue that's been being spoken about this evening, what a waste. This city is spending money to destroy the Bosque while people are homeless and starving. Thank you. Followed by Sarita Spahn, followed by Oscar Simpson. David had to leave. He asked him to read his first paragraph and give the second half to Maya. All right. David writes, I am one of many citizens who is outraged by your premature decision to begin trail construction work in the Bosque before finishing a legitimate public review. That work could have been completed in a more ecologically friendly way if you had let the review process run its course. For example, the most biologically and ecologically sensitive areas are immediately adjacent to the river, the riparian zone. The Southwest has already lost about 70% of its biologically rich and productive riparian zones. We should be restoring, not destroying, our precious riparian zones. Yet a portion of the newly graded trail runs adjacent to the river. This is ecologically unacceptable. And this is Maya, she's six. She goes to Hubert Humphrey Elementary. Well, welcome, Maya. issue is one of nuance. The trail that was plowed through last week is a standard eight foot wide trail bed for a six foot wide trail. And I've walked the whole thing from central to I-40. And what it doesn't do is sort of pay attention to each particular system. So what Dr. Parsons is saying is the riparian area right in front of the river is the most sensitive. So what we were talking about with the city is if you are feeling very insistent on a multi-use trail, let's do that where it's set back from the riverfront. Let's do it in a way that the bikes aren't going to spook the horses. Um, if it's going to be an ADA trail, which we highly favor, let's make sure to consult the community first and see what a good distance from parking to riverfront is for somebody in a wheelchair. Um, and what we talked about was keeping a very narrow trail system in the riparian area. Forest service documents show that you can have quite a narrow trail that's still wheelchair accessible, but keep the impacts low on nesting areas that are closest to the river. Um, so, you know, on Monday when we got these three maps, the city was sort of saying, this, these are three maps with a series of options that we'd like your feedback on and that we could take to public comment. So when you put those three options up for public review, the different communities can come in and say, the scientists can say, six foot wide in front of the river doesn't work. 
the ADA community can come in and say, pressure sign's okay, but this works better. Um, and all of that feedback we would have gotten through a public comment period that we were expecting from the city. Okay, so, so really the trail, from my understanding, went from six feet to, to larger. And it was an existing trail. So this six-foot trail that's adjacent to the river was already there. It was a small, narrow footpath. Right. Um, so let's say that this is the narrow footpath. What's there now is like this. Um, so it's the, the area literally two to three feet from the river is totally exposed. Um, it's been graded and leveled. Um, and it is absolutely not what we would have recommended from a scientific standpoint. And that's what we were talking about with the city. If you're going to insist on a wide trail, where can we do that with low impact? And how can we protect the riverfront riparian zone? Okay. Does that make sense? Well, it does. I mean, the, the, the trail was already there. And for me, part of the struggle that I have is that I've made this very clear before when I've talked um, with folks from the Sierra Club is that um, you know, the river is a precious resource, and you know, the initial plan that was out there, I totally was opposed to it when we talked about making it an urban park. Um, I think um, the administration pulled back and they really listened to, to the community and, and really felt that um, you guys were, um, you know, everybody was working together. For me, and as I mentioned, um, talking about this before, is that I have a, I have a family member who has developmental disabilities and I have another individual who's in a wheelchair. And unfortunately, for years and years, us as a family, we go down to the river very often. We go to high school on the trails. And um, when we walk um, in the bosque, it's been very, I felt um, for years, that it's been very safe, unsafe. It's um, not um, somewhere where I could take my brother or, um, or this other individual who's in a wheelchair. So, um, you know, I was really hopeful that, um, because you said you were two weeks away from consensus, that, that, you know, the pressure fine must have been something that was identified as an acceptable material. And, and the fact that the um, trail was already there, um, it just, I'm, I'm really appreciative that the option one was selected because there was other options where they would just create new trails. And I had, as I had mentioned before, um, a lot of um, a lot of the trails that were there were just um, made because you couldn't really find your way around there. So you kind of and really that was harming the environment um, tremendously, I believe. But um, so I just wanted to to ask what really kept you away from the two weeks from consensus and what made such a drastic change. Well, it's just such an odd thing. I mean, we got these three maps asking for feedback from the city, from the staff at, open, at the Open Space Department on Monday asking for our feedback. And when we got it down on Tuesday and found that the work had already been starting, we stopped getting any phone calls back. So we understood that we were at the table together, and we understood that the three maps that we had been sent were going to be the basis for the, the last part of the conversation. Um, we had looked at the maps that Monday night at the Bosque Action Team meeting. Um, there was a feeling that a, a combination of options one and two would be the best way to move forward. Um, we really agree with the idea of using existing trails, but to turn a footpath into an eight foot wide bed and a six foot wide trail in the most sensitive area is just not appropriate. The other thing that we're concerned about is that in no document, in no map, and in no discussion with the city was this trail ever identified as a possible ADA trail. Now, it might be a great ADA trail, and we'd like to see functional ADA trails within the basket, but as the woman who spoke before me said, you really have to get members of the ADA community together to see what's needed and what works. There's a difference between pushing an elderly relative in a wheelchair and trying to self-propel the person who will speak after me is a member of the Bosque Action Team. She did what I understand to be some of the only studies of what ADA accessibility to the Bosque would look like, and was the person bringing this to the city. So I, I think what you'll find right now is that for us, we, we have wanted to be at the table. We commend the city for starting over. We want to see increased accessibility, but we want to do it the right way. One thing that David Parson said in his document here is, you know, why rush this in before nesting season? Why not take this period of time that we have now to really look at the three options and do the proper option that works for most parties 
after nesting season so that we're not rushing and making mistakes along the way. Mr. President, without any, any outbursts, I'd just like to ask um, uh, Mr. Montano, Mr. Um, so where are we with this? I mean, is there any way to, to come to um, some agreement in terms of how we address the concerns of the community? Because two weeks out seems, you know, a pretty relatively short period of time to arrive at consensus. So and it seems as though um, much of the consensus had been been made. So if you can just kind of add. Sure. Mr. President and Councillor, uh, Mr. Reardon is actually going to take a step of that. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, President Arduino and Councillor Pena for the question. We had gone through a two and a half year process on this project, and, and through that process, I, I believe we had come to a consensus where we felt that originally this was going to be a 10 foot trail, um, it was going to be a, a lot longer portion of it along the river. That had been reduced to a six foot trail along an existing footpath. I, I think a lot of the consensus had already occurred. So really, you know, every time you get to the point, we'd already delayed a year last year outside of the, the migrating bird season for this environmental study that came back positive saying it should be in the Bosque doing. It is a man-made uh, environment that we need to continue to maintain that way. And and it, we just kind of continue to get delayed, whether it's two hours, two days, two weeks, two months, another two years. We, it's it a little bit of to say we're going to come to consensus because it wasn't tracking that thing. Mr. President, Councilor Kenya, may I respond? Yes, sir. On September 13th, 400 people turned out to a public hearing regarding the city's proposal. I have rarely seen such a turnout to a public hearing and there was a resounding no to the proposal of broad, wide trails through the bosque. People run into each other, the multiple uses don't work together, and as Gail Garber said, it's bad for bird populations. The city invited us to a new process, and we appreciated that. But you don't tell us to sit down with you at the table, and after we leave, slam the door behind us. We're happy to continue working with the city. We were almost there with open space staff. Um, so when this idea that there have been two years of public meetings, well, the first half of that didn't consult organizations that actually work with the Bosque and with the public. Um, the second half was an approved process, and we really appreciate that. But to imply that there's been a two-year process with deep consultation is just not true. Okay, thank you. Thank you, President. Thank you, Next is uh, Sarita Stang, followed by Oscar Simpson, followed by Chad Cooper. Thank you, um, Mr. President and counselors. Um, I, I am, uh, my name is Sarita Strang, and I'm a member of the Bosque Action Team. I'm also the leader of the Bosquitos, which is the group of the Bosque Action Team that volunteers to take children and families at no cost to the Bosque. We've collaborated with the Native Plant Society, um, the Biopark Aquarium, the Bosque Eco Monitoring Project. Um, in addition to that, I personally have a background in teaching people with physical disabilities who become partially paralyzed due to stroke, spinal cord injury, or other cause how to return to community mobility. For example, after someone's had a spinal cord injury, I teach them how to use a public restroom again, how to go grocery shopping. Um, I recently, I was finishing occupational therapy graduate school and I decided for my volunteer project to do a study on ADA access to the Bosque, which I started over a year ago. Um, and uh, it's a, I went to every single in the Bosque, um, and I also surveyed a number of people, 12 people who are wheelchair users, who may be familiar, did just flip through some of the work, um, who would like to use the Bosque. Um, the Bosque Action Team greatly supports the ADA community. I believe the ADA community has not been consulted. Um, I've had people in the ADA community who I um, asked to help with this survey, calling me saying, why are we not being consulted? Um, I also don't think that anyone um, 
who I work with, who is a wheelchair user, wanted the trail to go through a sensitive, most Very sensitive definitely. ride carrying area. Good. Good time, so. Thank you. Excuse me, before you leave, um, some quick questions, very good. Um, in, in, uh, in my work as an architect over the years, um, the uh, Governor's uh, Committee for Consumers of Handicap, um, which is now called something else, so that was the old name, but, um, uh, had, you know, have over the years approved pressure fines, compact pressure, state life pressure fines as, as an accessible surface. But, but I, I wonder if you would comment um, so I think when they analyze that, you're walking. <coughs> this is a multi-use path, so it's going to have horse hooves and bicycle tires, etc., uh, on that same surface. And I, I, I wonder if that was anything you would encounter. Honestly, I've heard a variety of opinions on what trail surfaces would be the best. I don't personally know. I think that asking a group of people who are regular wheelchair users to go out and try out different surfaces who live in Albuquerque and would be using the bosque would be the most prudent thing to do. I also can say that there are a lot of complaints of the people that I spoke with who do use wheelchairs in terms of things like why is there this beautiful paved path from the Rio Grande Nature Center? Phenomenal. The Aldo Leopold Trail is it's totally paved. It goes through the whole state. Why can they not get over the, the levee? There's no way to, for them to get over their levee and self-propel. And why does that trail not go all the way to the river when it's so close? Why um, some of the people that I talk to who do use wheelchairs try to go to the boardwalk that's just south of Central at this time and got stuck in sand pits. So I think that some of the areas that already have some access don't really have access, if that makes sense. And um, I think that's another reason to not jump into doing this project immediately. And uh, as the person who was representing the disability community here earlier, I think there needs to be more outreach. And um, I feel like you know, the Bulls could actually do a hundred hour study to try and reach out as volunteers. I think we really care and we love the Bulls and we want people of all abilities to be able to enjoy the Bulls game. And we don't think that has to mean that we have to also go into the most sensitive nesting ground. Thank you. Thank you. And the study is on our website. Thank you. Next is Oscar Simpson, followed by Chad Thurman, followed by Stephen Chavis. Thank you, Mr. President and members of the City Council. My name is Oscar Simpson. I represent a couple of groups. I represent the Backcountry Horsemen of New Mexico, and I represent the Backcountry Hunters of New Mexico. The City's response tonight is a typical example of why we need to stop this project. We have no public process. The City makes arbitrary, arbitrary decisions on what is good and what is suitable. The public process has failed. There's been lots of promises. I've been watching this stuff for the last two, th two years. I was also on Secretary Salazar's task force to evaluate the trail from Cochin T down to Elephant Dude Lake. We had lots of public process, <coughs> lots of expertise. The city of Albuquerque has advocated the whole process and we've made on numerous processes. Therefore, that's why I support Resolution 15169. <coughs> Senator Isaac Bitten, I'm your constituent, and I support this very much. And I hope the rest of the city, city council follows this through. The city abrogated its process, and that's the reason why you need to stop this. They need to start all over. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Like many others, we were alarmed to hear that construction had begun on the trail without warning. To be clear, 
we're not against development. We want to see improved paths, educational signage, and careful ecological restoration. We recognize the world's gates potential for tourism, generating economic development, and contributing to the attractiveness of Albuquerque. We believe it's one of the most unique features of our city and an important money for millennials and others who choose to move here or remain here. Our generation values communication. We immediately heard about construction <coughs> and about social media, but we heard nothing from the city about why it's happening without regard to the ongoing discussions. We feel that the political dialogue is often antiquated and polarized, and we want to see innovation in this area of communication. We have some ideas for better civic engagement, and we're already um, having meetings with the Corporate America team about that. Um, our generation also values honesty, and many of our peers are wary of them, and a lot of them don't even vote. Um, and they're wary of the political process because um, actions like those of last week reinforce this unfortunate distrust. Um, so we urge you to restore the public process and ensure that the rest of the project will be done in accordance with the knowledge and needs of all students. Thank you, Ms. Lindsay. I, I just wanted to ask, I guess. Uh, so you're saying that we need to find out about this until it has started. We have discussions going so backwards, if you will, until right. the social media alerted people. Right. Well, social media was, was where almost everyone heard about it first on Tuesday. So what does that say about every other country? <laughs> well, uh, I think the the rest of the media, um, there's, some, there's some great op-eds in other places, but the journal seems to be on side of the administration and this has provided no other perspective. So after the fact, reporting is not that great? Not at all, and it hasn't actually provided any explanation as to why the process was not was not helpful. Thank you. Uh, next is Sharon Cross, followed by Linda Starr, from Sue Hello, my name is Sharon Gross, and I was staff for the City Council from 1974 to 1980 when it began. And I am here to speak about public trust because I'm not on the Boston Action Team, but I have been part of this process. And I am really disturbed because I want to trust the government. And it isn't working for me right now. And I think this is be a bigger issue than just the Boston. So I commented on the environmental monitoring statement in December, and it didn't have a s scope of the project. It didn't. It wasn't precise. And I said, how can you tell what the environmental impact is if you don't even know what the scope of the project is? I went on the city's open space walk in January, and it was very educational. Again, there was no specific proposal put to me as a member of the public on the walk. But I saw some things on the walk. I saw two porcupines in a tree. The city open space staff said that it was really important for the regeneration of the cottonwoods that we have wet areas. They also said that it was very important that we not disturb the riverfront because that was the very sensitive area for the birds. And they talked about having access but restoration and environmental conservation and I think there was discussion of the fact that you can kill the bosque by overdoing it and if we destroy it it's not going to be there so I asked for rebuilding of public trust by supporting Council Benton's resolution and getting the public back into the process thank you thank you Linda Starr, followed by Sue Penn, followed by our last speaker, Marcia McCain. Hello there, counselors. Um, I'm Linda Starr, and I'm just speaking from the heart. I've lived in the South Valley for 25 years. I've lived in Albuquerque for 40 years, over 40 years. And I want to thank uh, Mr. Benton for his resolution and uh, for stopping construction, hopefully stopping construction in the Bosque. My son grew up along the Bosque, we picnicked along the Bosque. I've hiked uh, probably 100 miles along the Bosque in different parts of it uh, with the Albuquerque Senior Center's hiking groups. 
and we enjoy looking at the birds, the wildlife, the porcupines, uh, the occasional uh, coyotes even running through Bosque. And I don't want to see nature uh, suffer uh, what it does for the sake of development along the Bosque. I think that nature is important for our spirits, for our hearts, and, and we cannot let this go and, and develop nature. So we need to appreciate what's there for our hearts, for our spirits. Thank you. Next is Sue Finn, followed by our last speaker, Marcia McCann. Good evening, I'm Sue Flint. I'm a homeowner taxpayer at Central States. I'm here again after three years. Listening to everybody behind me speak about Bosque, I think that everything they've said is correct, but I think common sense is what rules. And destroying the Bosque is something that is not acceptable to anybody, and especially not under uh, plans that is strictly for development. This is a state park, this is a national treasury, everybody knows the mayor is nothing but a commercial developer. The mayor and everything that he has done, and he was a state representative of the legislation, he was told no. He was not given money, he was told that these projections of 500,000 people that he just said on this, the overhauling of uh, planning, 500,000 people are going to be here within 20 years. Oh well, God, I don't even be alive in 20 years probably. But who is he to say that we start changing everything now for 20 years from now? How does he know that's going to happen when we have no resources? We don't have any money, we don't have any jobs, yet he's ready to spend $1.5 million with your hacking Councilwoman Jones and Mr. Benton for planning to get rid of zoning and coding the way that it is. This is to cover their rear ends over what I have brought before you for three years. I spoke to Mr. Conrad and filed my third formal complaint with Mr. Brito, and I have given you every deductive argument that I have, which means my evidence is yours. It is public documents, it is public testimony. Mr. Winter, I asked him to step down, because he's not redistrict. If I had given the Bacchus, the information that I had on the redistricting of what this has done to this city based on this administration, they would have won their lawsuit. Of course, we had to get a good attorney, but they're all hired by the mayor at one point. So there's always a conflict of interest. This administration and this planning department and everything in it needs to be stopped and looked at. And I just today spoke to the attorney general because I'm done with it. Thank you. Good evening, Mr. President, Isaac Benton, and the counselors. My name is Marcia McMahon. I am from Morales. Um, there's been a lot of talk and, uh, already about the tent city, so I will leave that out of this and make it short and sweet. Um, the only methadone clinic that I know of in Albuquerque is way up by the airport and not accessible. I would ask for one downtown. Uh, the drugs and problems in Tent City, those people need help. Um, and after having worked in a methadone clinic, I know that they're not all bad. They have, they're human beings and they have no resources. They're lost people. Um, as far as Borellas goes, I think it should be declared under historic preservation. It's a beautiful old neighborhood, and at one time I understand it was thriving, and it needs to thrive again. Um, I also, you know, I'm, not, I'm all aware behind halfway housing, and also I would suggest a work study program. Uh, there are all kinds of things that people can learn. I work with developmentally like delayed people before, they have jobs, many of them who can uh, work. Um, and I also understand that a, a, a substantial amount was cut from, that was slated for the Workforce Trust Fund. Um, 
I was given the names of uh, Council, uh, Councilor Harris, Lewis, Jones, and Winter who were asking for that cut. And I want it back. I think we need it, in, and we have a crisis with Cinderella's. And the last thing is, we're only as strong as our weakest link. Um, these people need help. You. And I don't believe that they can Thank you. Your, your time is up. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, everybody, I'm sure, is ready for some assistance. So the council is going to be taking a three minute break. Thank you very much. Wake up, Robbie. City's in crisis.